Hey everyone, this is Kaisip and welcome back and today we're going to be looking at three different multi-floor elevators. First up, we've got a flying machine design, then we've got a water elevator design where you can flick a note block to go to the next level, and then we've got one with a pre-selector panel. So yeah, let's take a look at each one of these individually. So the first one we're going to be looking at is the flying machine one. So yeah, you just stand on it and it goes up. Here you can decide where you want to go and let's say we want it to go up. It takes a bit of time. You don't want to shift on this, it'll go on its own. And yeah, it goes up to the next level where it can stop. You can stand, press another button, sends you down. It takes a bit of time, wait for the system to be set. And then you can decide whether you want to go up or down, I choose to go down and yeah. So let's look at the redstone behind this thing. So the first layer is pretty simple. You've just got some redstone beneath this which activates those droppers, sends off the observers. So all this goes up and yeah, gets itself lodged over there. Now when going down it once again updates some observers which pass the distance of one tick so that it can go down. So this part's pretty simple. The really tricky one is the part where it has to go up from the first level and has to come back down from the second level. So let's look at some of the redstone here for attached to the second one. So first up you've got this piston which activates some double piston extenders which can update the observers back there. And that also uh, pulls back this ledge over here, which is actually what stops it from going any higher. So if you click that, you can see the ledge has been extended, and you can see the double piston extender in action as well. So it, yeah, once again goes to the next level, it gets itself lodged. We've once again got a big line of redstone. So that line of redstone provides a bit of delay so that it can go down, extend the double piston extender, and reset the lodging mechanism. So if we flick this and show what happens, you can see everything is normal. But once the piston passes that, we have the double piston extend activate and we've also got the lodging mechanism. So yeah, the system's completely set. You can decide if you want to go up or down. Yeah. So that's the flying machine. Now let's look at the water uh, the water elevator. So you just go through, you get shot out and you can drop off the first floor. But if you want to go to the second one, you just flick the note block. And you go to the second floor, you can go to whatever you want. And if you wanted to use the third floor, yeah, it's that simple. And now if you want to go down, you have to go through this chute. And that basically resets the system. So if you go back through again, you're still going to be able to get off at the first floor. Or, yeah. So how this works is every time you go through a floor, uh, we basically activate that node block, which activates this observer, which activates the dispenser, which has got some water buckets in it. The water buckets basically interrupt the upward flowing water, water column, which prevents you from going. So here we've got some string. What the string does is it passes the observer, one ticks piston, and it re-dispenses the water bucket. So just to explain that, if we go through, this one's currently full. If I go to the next layer by filling that one up, filling that particular block, you can see this one's now empty. So if I go through this column, activating the string and the observer, the water is re-dispensed as in it's being picked up. The only real challenge between this is connecting the observers to each level. The next one's going to be the pre-selector panel. Here we've got an item frame uh, attached to a lot of torches. You can use a lectern or cauldron based on how many levels you want. But let's look at this. So if I selected the second setting, you can see that one repeat is part. And this is aligned with one torch. But the signal is not really going anywhere. So you have got these pistons which are connected to the pressure plate. The pistons basically push a block which allows the signal to pass through. This torch is going to be the one that's going to activate, which activates that dispenser completing the water column. So if you wanted the second floor, uh, or let's say we go for the first floor, you can see all the pistons retract, but none of the dispensers have been activated. 
you go down and step on the other pressure plate. Now if we set it to the third floor, you can see that two repeaters are activated. Uh, one for activating the first floor's dropper, sorry dispenser, and one for the second floor so that you can continue up to the third floor. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at this. So you go past first, second and you slow down near the third where you can calm down. So yeah, that's the system. The most important thing is just step on the pressure plate. So as you can see, the dispenser is now empty. You can see that's how the reset mechanism works. It's now filled up again. And so is that one, it's now filled up. So if I set it to another one, you can see um, a lot of the repeaters are filled up, actually all the way up to the fourth layer meaning I can go up five layers. So as you can see, it goes all the way up to the top and you can come down as you wish. Just make sure that you step on the pressure plate. You can reset it at your own will. The most important thing is you step on one of the pressure plates before going in. So anyways guys, that's uh, all I've got time for today. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. So chaff now, bye bye.